Hi everyone, welcome back to Somerset House and our digital series, Upgrade Yourself Peer Exchange. I'm Scott and I'm delighted to be back. I'm one of the creative producers at Somerset House, where I lead on the Creative Careers and Skills Programme. Today's event is being streamed live on Twitch, Somerset House website, YouTube Live, Facebook Live and Twitter. If you'd like to ask any questions and for a chance it can get read out during the next hour, please comment on one of the platforms using hashtag Somerset House. Our Creative Careers programme supports emerging new talent and offers access routes into the creative industries, which we deliver as three strands. The first strand is the Creative Careers Academy, which offers full-time work placement, fairly paid at London Living Wage, within the creative sector and on-site at Somerset House. Second strand is the Creative Job Studio, mentoring and networking events in partnership with the charity Creative Society. And the third strand is Upgrade Yourself, skills enhancing workshops and talks delivered digitally and eventually in real life. Today, Katie Dominey and Alex Brownless, both founders and directors of ArtsThread, will be sharing practical tips, advice from their digital platform. So for now, sit back, grab a pen and paper, as I'm delighted to introduce you to Katie and Alex. Katie and Alex? Oh, unmute. Um, so Alex and I are the co-founders of uh, ArtsThread. And Scott, if you'd like to show us the homepage of ArtsThread, I can tell you a little I bit will. more about it. Thanks. So we started about 10 years ago, and my background is that I was a fashion designer. I studied at the University of the Arts, London um, College of Fashion. And from the, being a fashion designer, I then worked for trend agency WGSN. And from then, I actually then started working freelance as a trend consultant. And from that, I started with Alex ArtsRed because we realized there was nothing um, available for students when they graduated to be able to show their work online. Originally, it was going to be a magazine, but then we um, moved, morphed into it being a website. And we, since then, we've... Um, We've moved forward with different iterations of the website, and you can see it here today that it is a mixture of portfolios, it's uh, advice for students, it's competitions, and it's schools. So there's a, there's a lot more for you to, to look at. And now I'll pass over to my colleague, Alex. Yes, yeah, so just to, to add to what Katie just said, um, I, I, you know, I think it's, it's only right to say how, how, how I started, I, I think, for the benefit of um, the viewers. Um, I, I was an engineer in the 1980s and uh, ended up retraining and, and did a degree in, in textile design. Um, from there, I um, ended up working in the fashion industry and have worked in the fashion industry for well over 25 years. Um, I had my own brand in the 90s called NASA, label, streetwear label, um, that was, was quite successful globally. Uh, ended up, uh, working at a company called WGSN in the late 90s, which is where I met Katie. And, and that's how we originally, you know, met each other. And 10 years on, I, I bumped into Katie at, um, well, I kept on bumping to Katie a couple of times over the uh, course of about two weeks at all these different trade shows showcasing emerging designers. Because at that time, I was working for an American recruitment firm um, that were, you know, global. And... When I, I, I met Katie, Katie's um, concept of ArtsThread being a magazine that was solely focused on emerging designers and artists, I thought was truly inspiring. So um, at the time I said, look, you know, might be an idea to, to create a digital platform, a website. And yeah, here we are today with a website that's been, well, it's, it's been live for over 10 years now, Katie, yeah? Yeah, 10 years so, you know, we, we celebrated our, our decade a few months back. Um, you know, over the years, we've built relationships with well over 800 uh, universities and art schools and design schools in well over 120 countries, um, you know, from Guatemala to Sinki, you name it, um, it, right across the board. And the platform itself, um, going back, Scott, if it's possible to go back to the, the website, um, you know, we, we created a platform that we thought would be really, really important to have a, an area on the site that was solely focused on students who were about to graduate. Now, whether that's a master's program or a BA or a HND even, we, we felt that somebody on the planet needed to create a platform for emerging designers and artists. 
and 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 Katie and I, you know, created that, and and we have today now a, a platform that, you know, has you know around a hundred thousand portfolios uh, on the site um, from all you know all parts of the planet, but not just in in uh, textiles and fashion, but product design, industrial design, uh, craft. So that being ceramics and glass and jewelry, uh, visual communication, moving image, film, gaming. So the platform itself is um, a showcase for all artists and designers to, 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 to show their way really, to the industry. Um, but we're solely focused and uh, as Katie, you know, we've remained true to you know, Katie's first ideals of, of a site that was only orientated towards emerging talent, not, not established, not professional students who were about to graduate. Um, and, and 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 to get a break. Do you want any? Do, do you want to add anything to that, Katie? Uh, I think one of the things that's really important for us is to say that we're that what's. I think what we're trying to do is to make sure that we include everybody. So it's not just someone who graduated from you know the top five schools it, you know the, it's an it's very much a level playing field so you know if you went to um a smaller university that doesn't have the the, the money to, to to have like a really huge show in london you know your portfolio is just as valid as 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 as, as those people because i think um as we move forward we see that you know, some universities have a lot more um, budget to promote their students than others. And for us, what's really important is that everyone has the same chance to, to, to show, to show how, how, how good they are. And actually, in a strange way, this, this, this year with, its, um, with the students having to do so much work online, it does actually almost make it more democratic than it maybe has been previously. I think that's that's a really good point. I mean, we, we always had students from Asia, Australia, um, the Middle East, you know, Russia uh, uploading. Uh, but then we thought, well, you know, wouldn't it be a really great idea if we launch an initiative that, you know, no one's ever done before, um, that being a, a first ever online global graduate show. Um, and And if possible, Scott, if you could take us um, you know, back to the to the homepage, um, where you know we can actually see um, what what we've um, what we've launched very recently, and literally we we, we launched this uh, new initiative only six weeks ago. We uh, teamed up with ID, um, and you know we're back on the um, digital on the, the homepage. And if you could click on onto this section, yeah, that'd be great. Fantastic. Thanks, Scott. Um, so here we are, you know, the, the Global Design Graduate Show, which we've launched in conjunction with ID, Vice Media, you know, as most um, young people, artists, designers, viewers, know ID. Um, you know, ID have got amazing, you know, uh, global uh, scope. We felt that they would be the perfect partner to work with on a, on a project such as this. Um, we launched this initiative, you know, only a few weeks ago. Already, we've got you know well over a thousand um, students who are due to graduate this year. Um, not just in fashion and textiles, but visual communication and film and gaming, uh, industrial product design, craft, fine art, you name it. Um, and so this platform, you know, we've got a little video on there that you know sums up everything in sixty seconds. But we also have a breakdown of of what. Um, the industry have, have asked us to do. So we, before launching this, we obviously approached the industry and major brands globally. We'll be announcing next week, um, you know, the judges. Um, we've already announced a few already, but we've got some amazing judges on board already from all around the planet. You know, we've got Heatherwick Studio, Tom Dixon. You know, we've got uh, Vogue. We've got LVMH. We've got um, yeah, Heron Preston. Um, Yeezy, I mean, some amazing brands, Philips, that have um, want to make a difference, right? And, and I think the key thing to state was our platform was always for the underdog, actually, right? I, I don't put that mildly. You know, it's very, very difficult to get a break in the first instance 
because it took me six months and that was in the early 90s to get my first full-time job in in fashion so we know it's harder today so by creating a platform that um, embraces you know emerging talent from all walks of life all around the planet Africa Asia Europe you name it that's very inspiring and we love the diversity of it all and I love what Katie said earlier you know it, it is a level playing field right so it's inclusive it's as I said diverse but the students themselves have to be proactive so the idea is that any student who is uh, looking to um, it, it will be um, due to graduate this year they qualify for this initiative so as you see we've got all the different areas you know photography fashion graphic design you name it um you know competition deadline still got till the end of july but as i said already we've got well over a thousand students who have uh, uploaded their final year project and um, this is an ongoing factor as well so we've created this year but you know, both Katie and myself and the rest of the gang at Artshred decided that, no, this needs to be ongoing because, you know, it's very powerful to have an online platform for, for everybody, you know, graduating every year. And, and so, yeah, that, that, that's something that, you know, was a very proactive solution to, you know, our current, um, I, would, I wouldn't say crisis, but um, in our chaotic times that we have, right? So um, I think, you know, that, that, that's just one example, but, but the, the platform, itself going back is we've got an area for all portfolios so that be um, for all students who are not necessarily even graduating they can upload their their projects their their uh, lives they can enter competitions um, and challenges and we do global events like new york design week and milan design week not just you know the uk and london um so it's all there um you know we're constantly evolving you know the site we're going to be, you know, making changes again to it, another revamp shortly. But the Global Design Graduate Show today is our focus because it's all happening in the next couple of months. And then we move on to the next one, if you like. So, you know, we've got another, um, with Premier Vision, we, in Paris, we were the biggest textile trade show on the planet. We've just launched um, PB Next Gen Awards. Um, so that's another factor that we're, we're involved with. Again, all this information is on the homepage. You can sign up to our newsletter that you know comes to you um, minimum a couple of times a month, um, and you'll be constantly updated of all the initiatives that we're trying to do. We, what we're doing actually this summer is, is to help the the younger designers and artists get a break. I mean that's it, and also at the same time, it's really important for teenagers who are thinking about potentially going to study, going to college, going to do a, a foundation or a national diploma or a degree or a master's, they can come to the site and see the work mm -hmm. from the different universities around the planet as well. So it's, a, it's an educational tool as well. And that, that's something that Katie felt very strongly about, you know, back in the day, that it couldn't just be a portfolio site or an online magazine. It needed to educate. And so we, we've been very proactive you know, over the last decade and, um, you know, we always come up with new ideas and listen to the people are saying, why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? So um, I think I've covered most of that, Katie, do you uh, think? That was brilliant, guys. Yeah. Sorry, it's got back again. Um, that was so brilliant. It was so in-depth you went. It was really um, interesting to hear all of the different components of the website and using um, the website as a tool for not just young designers and artists but also like academics i'm sure jump in there's a lot of like feedback from colleges and students and stuff um i think when you spoke about a really accessible and um diverse platform that kind of works for the underdog you said but i think that's really it, it's a really kind generous thing to hear because creative people are they want to create work and share so it was a really nice way of phrasing that um there's lots of questions coming in so i think we'll get to them shortly i'm just aware of of time as always um we did put together a couple of um options to look at so i guess if we just look at two of the practical guides that you, you offer on the website is that okay um Definitely. happy with that guys so we shall look at first of all just bear with me as i find the screen um katie can you maybe just tell a bit about when you when you both met uh, and you, you formed this working relationship like 
Um, as a creative person, how important is collaboration and working with others? Maybe we can share a bit of that. Yeah, I think it's collaboration is, is, is really important. And actually, um, some projects that I've been working with, um, with students this, this year, actually was to say to them that actually this, this, oh, this window that they're living through at the moment, where they're actually having to do all their work online, and often at the university, they're having to do um, collaborative projects with maybe two or three others. So, for example, if you were doing it, whatever you were doing, like if you were doing something like product design, you might do it in a team of three or four people. But if you can actually use this time to learn how to work as a team mm. online, then it would be, it's a great tool for then you actually getting work, you know, this summer, going forward because there's so many companies where they're still struggling to get together to get to understand how to work together that actually if you as someone who in you know is is wonderfully sort of digitally enabled can use all of these tools knows how to use zoom knows how to use interactive whiteboards and to, to be able to show an employer that you can, you know, work with four people, whatever, it, no, no, no problem will stand in your way, that actually you're in a really good space to be getting that freelance work and that job at the moment. So actually, I think what I've been saying to people is, you know, really use this time to be able to show and prove that you have you are able to do this because at the moment that is the really the, the strong card of people actually getting maybe over the next year for example getting work. I think that's, that's really good. Play. You know, we we we've had experiences in the past where um, students have contacted each other through our platform. Hmm. It's very easy to do that. We had a um, if I'm not mistaken a Scandinavian um, furniture designer connect with a um, Irish I think the Irish or Scottish it was definitely a Celt. Um, uh, textile designer and they collaborated on a an amazing uh, just you know it was a, a bit of furniture with a uh, beautiful textile it was very complimentary and it just it was fascinating to see and they were so proactive and then they they contacted us and said look you know we, we've through your platform we've met each other we've collaborated we've created this object and we'd love um for you to have a look at the work that we've created and um we were blown away it was absolutely gorgeous and that will actually, this could be really amazing for Milan Design Week, you know, which is, you know, that was known as the Italian Furniture Fair. So it was, you know, it's not just furniture now, it's all forms of product in Milan. But um, yeah, they ended up showcasing this, this chair in the heart of Milan, right, in Totona. And, and so this is what we're saying is that the more proactive you are, the more collaborative you are, the more of an asset you are. OK, and, and on, on the on online perspective, which is, you know, Katie's really honed in on, we, we, we know that a lot of the students this year, especially, which is why we've obviously made this big thing about the Global Design Graduate Show for this year, they have access to studios and workshops. They're having to work from their bedroom floor, for example. And we're saying, look, don't worry. You know, we've got a platform that is perfect for you. It's free. You know, you can upload your projects or your end of year project. And, and, and showcase what you, what's going on in your brain, right? And that, that's the thing that has to be emphasized. When I was in the industry hiring designers or when I was working in recruitment for a few years for this American company I used to work for, I was always looking at the, 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 the objects or the, 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 you know, the designs that the, um, the designer had created. And some of these guys were creative directors earning a quarter of a million, right? Um, but I still didn't really see the story behind what they created. I, I, I saw the finished item, but what, how did it start? The process, the process is more exciting, I think, personally, than the, sometimes the final object that's created, right? So this design graduate show that we're doing now, and as I said, it, you know, the deadline's July 31st, we've still got a few more weeks to go. What we're seeing is um, work being uploaded that isn't necessarily the finished item because they haven't been able to access um, the, the, you know, the facilities at the university, but they can tell their story. They can upload sketches and they can put up film and they can put up, you know, their story, which is honestly, is, it's, it's massive, Katie, isn't it? That's what the industry is looking for is imagination and, and new concepts. Yeah, it, it is actually. And uh, yeah, on the site within the practical section, we have a whole um, section which is called design keywords. And 
storytelling is one of those because it's so important that students and graduates realize as Alex said that when they go for an interview or a Zoom interview it, it's it is that storytelling element that that starting point that is the most the most interesting thing for for a potential em employer definitely and, and, and thing as well just to add to when 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 um i was um placing um designers at you know philips and samsung and nike all these different companies that we're working for back in the day which is one of the reasons why thread was created really i mean i said to katie look the industry is crying out for a platform to find you know these rough diamonds yeah because that's what i call them these rough diamonds because they're they're not polished up they're not 100 percent and that, i think that's really refreshing by the way it's far more i think it's far more exciting to see a, a rough diamond something that's completely done and clean and finished right um but that's probably because where 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 i come from right but the the, the thing that I, I genuinely believe is that when when those individuals you know showcase their capabilities so they, it's very important that they show that they're strong in Photoshop and Illustrator and Rhino and all the platforms that they can showcase their capabilities. Because at the end of the day, the viewer, the viewer is looking for that, right? The viewer is looking for the, you know, oh my God, this, this amazing accessory designer, this amazing sneaker designer, footwear designer that I'm looking at is, oh, incredible. I mean, work 360 degrees, you know, you know, amazing sketches, amazing renderings. I'm, you know, I'm just giving an example, but, you know, it could easily be uh, industrial design. It could be transport design. It could be fashion design. It could be gaming. You know, that it has to be the thought process going on in the brain, how you project that, you know, you set the mood, you put your sketches up there, your story tell, which is what Katie, you know, put together in our practical section. And it, it, that's why it's in our practical section. It's so important that students tell their tell their story. Can we have a look at the practical section? Is that all right, Scott? Um, yes, of course, guys. So the practical um, guides are uh, we're here. Practical guides. And there's a lot to it, um, as you can see on the on the right hand side. You know, graduation tips and all the rest of it. But um, I mean, the, Katie, we've got numerous areas to this, haven't we? Yes, we have. We've got um, areas for pre-university tips, so advice on um, how to create a portfolio for, um, for um, art and design schools, for example. Um, and that really talks about what, uh, what a school is really, um, school university is looking for in your portfolio. Um, so that could, you know, it talks about how they're really looking at the sort of the raw material that you're producing. A bit like we were just talking about the, the storytelling. They're interested in your ability to, to draw, your ability to, to paint, for example. Um, they're not expecting you to, to come up with, I mean, for example, if you were um, going for an interview for industrial design, they don't expect you to come in with like perfect renderings and things like that. It's more about your, uh, the sort of the raw material that you can bring to, to the portfolio um, for the art and design. And, and it's a lots of tips about, you know, thinking about the questions that they might ask you, like, why do you want to come and study at our university? Um, what do you think you might want to be in the future? So it, it's a lot of those uh, kind of tips just sort of to be to being prepared before you actually um, get to the um, to the university. I mean, a lot of them now be obviously online, um, and also there's lots of thoughts about whether you want to go to university, a physical university, whether you want to do online courses. or lots of what they call blended learning now, which is where you do some of your learning um, at the university. So some of the, uh, the, the, the workshops, physical workshops that you'll need to do. And then uh, um, the other um, lectures, for example, you might do online. And actually, um, because of what's happened this year, that is one of the ways that a lot of universities are going to be working from September anyway, actually. Mm. So there's lots of things like, as we're looking here on the screen, the university survival tips. So this is what's happening whilst you're at university. And then we've got a lot for people who, um, who are actually graduating. So that might be something like um, uh, how to put together a graduation show, how to write a press release, 
lots of uh, lots of different advice on on yeah how to crowdfund for a degree show that's a very popular one um so again it's just giving you lots of um lots of tips and advice and then obviously when you do graduate there's there's the actual things like you're writing a press release for the first time for your um for your graduation show and then there could be yeah so there's lots of ideas there and then obviously for a lot on for people who are actually starting their own business. So at the moment, we've got one on how to sort of pivot your creative business um, in the current crisis. We've got um, lots of actual work, ones where we're actually looking at very practical things like how to write a business plan. Um, yeah. Or it could be how to write a CV, how to write um, a uh, collection statements we've got here. We've also got quite a lot of um, Q and A's with with people who have started their own business, so which is really enlightening because it talks about the uh, their ups and downs, how they how they started, what went wrong, how they managed to to, to get where they are. So looking here, we're seeing online uh, how do you balance your side hustle and study and work at the same time? Because I think for us, we it's important for us to realise the actually reality for a lot of students or people who are just graduated or people who are just going. You know, the reality is that, you know, oh, people haven't got rich parents who are going to subsidise everything. People are balancing working in a coffee shop whilst they're still studying. And then the same happens afterwards. And I think a lot of it is also making people who graduate feel uh, reassured that actually that is quite normal. You know, it's normal to spend a year or even two years after you graduate having to perhaps do jobs that you might not want to do for a couple of days a week because then that gives you the money to be able to do the things that you do want to do for the other three days or probably five days of the week. So I think, you know, that it's really important that we, as you're saying here, empathy, that we emphasise with them on this um on this predicament because it's not that easy for people to just walk into a job straight away especially if they want to start their own business you know it will be a balancing act between you your life and all the things to do with your own life and your work and and, and having to make money so i suppose that that's you know for us that's really important and now we're looking at these um design keywords mm. and again i I'll think they're interesting too Sorry, Katie, I'll just jump in. I think brilliant what you're saying about um, people that have to sort of make some compromises or they have mm. to work in a coffee shop or a bar or restaurant. It's very, it's very telling, especially like we're obviously um, in London. So a lot of our people, a lot of the people that come onto our programme, they are doing two or three different jobs, going to art school. Um, but I think it's, it's really good that this is like an amazing resource because actually I, I feel like anyone watching this um, session just now should spend a couple of hours sort of have some goals that they want to get from it is it about reading some of the practical guides or building their bank of design words like building their their language which helps articulate um their ideas around authenticity and their kind of values as a creative person i think that's really important as well yeah. scott i, I no gotta say you know that, 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 that i i have to tell you i i didn't have it easy when i when i started i mean i i to 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 do my, I, I didn't get the foundation in art and design in Newcastle uh, straight away, which is why I was an engineer in the end. Um, my, my, my portfolio was virtually non-existent and quite rightly, they didn't accept me. And I, it came as a bit of a shock because yeah, I had a bit of an ego still have. Um, and I think, wow, really? And um, I think, oh, what am I gonna do now? And so I ended up working for British Telecom as an engineer. Um, and, but at night school, because I thought, you know what, I'm gonna prove them wrong, right? And that, that's the thing to say, right? You know, it, some people can just fold in, cave in, give up, right? I, I couldn't do that. And I, I think a lot, of, a lot of creative people aren't like that. They, they are like that. They, they'll, they, well, some will cave in, obviously, but a lot won't. And you can't, you've got to be steadfast in your approach, right? Um, I ended up getting into foundation because I went to night school while I was still doing a full-time job. And that was in the 80s. And it, it was tough because in the northeast of England, then there was a lot of unemployment. And I was lucky to get a job in the first place as an engineer. Um, and as you can imagine, you know, my family weren't particularly happy me quitting a, a, a quite a well-paid job because my family weren't particularly well off um, and go and go and study. But luckily, it was in, in the good old days when I get free education. And that was my justification. Right. And, and then off the back of 
yeah, when I when I finished my degree, I, I thought I was I was cock sure. I thought, you know what, people are gonna come to me and give me a job tomorrow morning and hey, Bob's your uncle. Nothing, not a thing, not a phone call. Um, and and you know what? 95% of the people that you know study and graduate will get, you know, will not get that call. Okay. okay? So what do you do? You're proactive. You know, you, you have to embrace tools that are out there. You don't have to spend money. You know, the beauty of it now is with online and you know, I don't have to um, bore the younger generation when I'm nearly 50, right? But the, the fact of the matter is, it's there. You know, it's all there. I mean, it, you know, we, we only had the bloody yellow pages in the early 90s and that was painful, right? Um, so you've got, you've got something here, right? And, and, and our platform has been created for for everyone right not not just teenagers in school who are thinking about art and design at, at university but also help those students who are just about to graduate and then also help the industry find what they're looking for so it, it is a one-stop shop right and that was blatantly obvious to katie when she created the magazine but the website has made it even more inclusive because there is no restriction, right? You know, the, the cloud in the sky is, is where it's all housed and it, it's not economical, but it's not expensive either. So we've got something very powerful, but the, that practical section, although at times could be a little bit dry, it's bloody important, right? Um, because, you know, how you write your um, resume and your CV and how you project your, yourself online and, and physically, yeah, is, is, it's, it's all there. You know, we're giving you the tips. It's not, we're not being the oracle. All we're doing is, is, is doing our market research and talking to the industry and talking to the events companies and say, look, what are you looking for? Because these students need a break, right? They, they need a, and, and more so than ever, right? But, but I, I really genuinely want, want to make it very clear that for any student graduating this year, they've got a great opportunity because they've got more likelihood of succeeding than a, an old person like me, right? So I know I'd rather employ a younger person than a 50-year-old Northern guy who's like, you know, basically come to the end of his career, right? So I think you've got, you've got an opportunity. And, and we, 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 with Arts Thread, you know, we, we, we give you that. You know, Scott, you're great. You, you, you've gone into, what is a covering letter? A covering letter is not the same letter going to every single company that you're interested in working for, like Scattergun, it's not. Don't ever do that. Because I tell you what, you won't get a reply. You might get the odd one, but very unlikely. Why? Because you've got to personalize it, right? You've got to make the person who is receiving the letter, and actually, it might be a letter. It might not be an email, okay? It's not a bad idea to send something through the post. It, I know it sounds very old school, but I'm more likely to open a letter than I'm a, an email because I get too many emails and not enough letters now. The only letters I get are bills. So if I get a letter into my, in my letterbox, they go, oh, it's not a bill. And I like the colour of the envelope. I think, wow. And then I open it, I think, wow, that's amazing. I'm very likely to go back to that person, honestly. Why? Because they they made me feel special. Yeah? They put a first-class stamp on it, right? They don't put a second-class stamp on it. Put a second-class stamp on it, it goes in the bloody bin, right? Uh, these are all the little factors to think about. It sounds quite harsh, but the whole thing to state is we're trying to filter the industry and the people out there who are looking for, you know, the, the, the best talent on the planet. Uh, there, there has to be a filtering system. So by embracing the tools that we've given you here, where you can get your resume right, make sure there's no spelling mistakes, talk about the skills that you have got, maybe mention that you work in the Duke of Edinburgh on a Wednesday night and you get people because you have to pull them out of the pub at 10.30 at night and tell them to leave. Those sort of things actually are not irrelevant because it shows people skills, okay? So there's, there's things to think about that, that need to be thought, and you know, we're giving you a lot of tips here, and it's not, it's not Katie and Alex you know, writing all of this. Yes, we're, 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 you know, Katie's filtering a lot of it, but a lot of it's coming from, from the industry and, and saying, look, this is what we're looking for. This is what we need. And, and it's so important to emphasize those factors, and that's why it's there. That was brilliant, Alex. I feel like I could listen to you all day. There's so many amazing um, I think it's the stories. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't be advertising, but I am sponsored by Coco. Very good, very good. I am um, I am writing notes as you're talking, and like when you said the more proactive you are, you're an asset, and um, process makes it more exciting. I feel like these could be like slogan T-shirts. We should sort of start to yeah. start to yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, stand out, right? Stand out from the crowd. Don't don't be don't conform necessarily. Don't be a sheep, right? You know, work the work that you put out there needs to be original in concept and, and needs to be thought provoking and you know needs to inspire right and if you're not as good a draw as you are with color show off your color right if you're not as good with color because you're color blind you know show another skill right that everyone's got it right it's just a matter of being true to yourself and seeing what your capabilities are and if you're weak at certain things you know try and improve those weaknesses okay but um, I mean, I, I, I'm, 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 I'll be lying to you now if I said that I try and do that because I don't. But um, a lot of people should do because I've been, you know, I've been quite lucky, right? I've, but you've got to make things happen. So when when there's tools out there and you've got Instagram and you've got Artspread and you've got all these platforms that are free and are not expensive and it doesn't matter where you are on the planet, that that's quite handy, you know? Mm. Because in the, in the years gone by, we start to pay for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. You know, it's all there. That's brilliant. Um, there's lots of questions, guys. So I think what we'll do, we'll um, I'll just start asking you some questions, just short answers. There's a lot of questions coming through, if that's okay. Um, so Katie or Alex, feel free to either you can both answer or you can take turns. But um, so we've got a couple to go through. So what is the worst moment of your career so far? Um, but not COVID-19 and nothing um, too traumatic, I think. But how did you show resilience and bounce back? Can I answer that, Katie? Y yeah, you can answer that. Um, go going to court with the American government. Um, oh. So that was that, that was quite a big deal. Um, when when I had a brand called NASA, um, we we ended up in court because we yeah we pinched the logo and we didn't expect it that to be as successful as it was. Um, and, and then the Americans came after us because we were selling into America. So that was, you know, you, you live and learn. Yeah. It was very good PR though. Yeah. So there's always an upside to negativity. Right. I mean, and, 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 you know, we, Kate, you'd be fair. We, we have a challenge every day, don't we? We, we? Things do not go swimmingly every day. I mean, it's no, no, they don't. I mean, I would say probably my was I had uh, a very well paid job, but it involved like a crazy amount of traveling. And I had the opportunity to the take redundancy. And I think for me, that was kind of like one of those things that's a very hard decision. I mean, I did take it and I'm so glad that I did, but it's one of those decisions that you think, am I crazy to do this? You know? But that, that was probably for me, like the, hard, you know, the hardest decision, I think. But looking back at it, was it one step back and two steps forward? Oh God, yeah, I'm so glad I did. Absolutely. Yeah. But at the time, Some, it's it. Yeah, sometimes something has to die in order to regrow almost. Exactly, like, you know, so exactly, you can't, exactly. You can't hold on too long. Um, in terms of like, you obviously have this brilliant facility, uh, resource which facilitates so much talent and um, nurtures so many amazing ideas. Do, do family and friends come to you for advice within like sort of a creative way of thinking about things or creative problem solving? How does your family react to what you do? Wow. For me, I would say not, not necessarily, but I do think that having, having your own business does give you those some kind of skills that you don't have when, you, um, when you're an employee. You, you do learn to be able to perhaps divide between um, uh, business and actual and dealing with people so I think for me it's it's given me a lot more people skills that I don't think I would have had if I'd have worked within a conventional business for example having to have your own business yeah I think that, that's a really good point I mean I'd, I'd say 50% of my career I've, I've been employed and 50% of my career is you know in the last 28 years um so yeah half of that's been uh, as an entrepreneur um it's clear that I, I, looking back on it now, I wouldn't employ me. Um, I, I think I, I, I'm a little bit different. Uh, um, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I think when it comes to art and creativity, 
I'm a bit like a butterfly in that I flutter around a bit. And I don't, I don't think I'm disciplined enough to, 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 to be a nine till six sort of guy. Um, and I, but it, it took, it took a long time to, to work that one out. Um, you know, I'd far rather work at midnight or the weekend some days than working at Tuesday morning. Think, you know what? I'm not, I'm not feeling inspired today. You know, um, my day might kick off in the afternoon, but I mean that that's not necessarily good. But it, it, it might. It's not a bad thing either. Um, but I think sometimes you've got to be true to yourself. Um, and I, I, I like what Katie said earlier about the work balance as well. You know, sometimes sometimes you do things. Um, you know, like working behind a bar or whatever to subsidize your your love, you know, for like fine art, for example, right? Um, and I, I think that that is, I think that's brilliant, you know, that that you you work along those because you've everyone's got, I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but it's true. Everyone's got a dream, right? And you've got a dream, you, you want to fulfill it, yeah, as best you can. You know, we don't always get it, but I think you've got to follow your heart a bit and, and not have regrets. And but you, you have to work hard to get there. And and then those factors are really important. I think, you know, we we we're, we're, we find it hard every day. I mean, art thread is hard, you know, because we've always got a challenge coming up. You know, the site needs work and there's all sorts of things behind the scenes that might not might not be apparent, but it, life isn't easy, right? <laughs> that, that ties in really well with the next question, actually. Um, with so obviously thinking about the audience, people that will be doing freelance work or different projects. Um, so the question is with freelance work and running your own business, how do you stay motivated and strict with day-to-day -day tasks? So I guess that's kind of like the, the, the admin or the not glamorous side of things, but how do you keep your motivations or? I, I would say that one, of the, one way of doing that would be to make sure that you're really kind of disciplined in, in actually creating uh, uh, like a spreadsheet or however you want to put together the sort of the, what you call the boring things, whether it's like sorting out your VAT or putting that, making sure that you, you, you actually have a very sort of disciplined way of doing that online, whether it's spreadsheets or Google Drives or whatever you want to do. And what you could do um, is maybe dedicate um, a certain time every week like you might say okay friday morning i'm going to dedicate to to this work between i don't know 10 and one o'clock something like that so i think that would probably for me be the sort of the top two tips as to as to how i would deal with that issue yeah you, you need a structure um and a priority list it's it's massively important um i mean i i had a boss back in the day that um you know, realized that I wasn't the most organized and she uh, took me aside one day and said, look, you know, you want to, you want to create your day in segments. You know, this, this is your nine to 11, 11 to one, two to four, four to six. And it was the best thing for me because I'd have a list of my tasks for the day. And if I could get 80% of those tasks done by six o'clock, that's not bad. Um, and I, she really, I mean, very, very structured lady, best boss I've had. And um, I've, I've always kept to that regime in that it's very difficult to put your head on the pillow at night and you still think, oh, I should have done such and such. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it's not good for the brain if, if you know, you're, you're still ticking. Um, you know, it's better just to get it done. Uh, you've got to be disciplined, you know? Uh, oh, can I just add something? Um, mm. I think also the other thing is, creatives have a tendency to move on to the next project and forget to actually send that invoice. And mm. uh, I have to admit, I mean, you know, I, I do that myself. And it is, it, it, but it's really, really important that, you know, once you've done your work and you can invoice the client, do it straight away. Because so many clients are like, not particularly great at paying within you know, on time. 30 on time. <laughs> That, you know, it, that is really, really important to, to, to get that. I mean, what the other thing is that if you're finding that you're getting actually quite a lot of work and there's quite a lot of admin, what I would say is um, you could always delegate that to somebody. You know, find someone that you could pay, you know, a, a, either a minimum wage or if it's just a mate, you know, say, look, will you do this for me? And here's, you know, I'll buy a bottle of wine, whatever. Incentivize them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. incentivize them and, and, and get them to do it for you. I mean, I think the... We, 
the art of delegation, even at a very small mm -hmm. scale, is really, really important for creatives because, you know, that person that you ask to do something for you, whether it's, you know, maybe they might just want to do your social media for you because they love it. It's never, no, no, no task is too small to start delegating off once you find that you can't do everything yourself. That's brilliant, Katie, the art of delegation. I love that. Just writing that down as a note. Um, thinking about business then, so when you both sort of started out um, working freelance and then forming your own business, um, do you think you're equipped with the skills, like finance skills, marketing skills to do that? Or have you learned on the job? I would say <laughs> yeah. that... Uh, yeah, I think we yeah learn on the on the job. But I think one of the things that uh, that I feel that was really important that we did was that if you don't know, find someone that does, uh, rather than kind of spend a huge amount of time yourself trying to sort something out if you really can't. Um, you know, find a way to have have an accountant. You know, ask all of the organisations that are there for small businesses um, that are there to help you with things like. You know, accountancy and marketing and things like that get their advice get them to help you um and then as we were saying about the de art of delegation if you can find a way to delegate some of these tasks to people without it costing you too much money then i think that it's really important not to get bogged down in things that aren't you know that are not your top skill get someone else to do them for you well yeah De definitely, but also um, you, you, you need to be clued up to it because otherwise you, you might you might overspend. Um, and I, I think use your li use your library, right? Because your library is a pretty good for free information. Um, I mean, it, certainly the, the libraries in the UK, well, I should say uh, Great Britain, um, they they've got um, free services. You know, when it comes to um, making a business plan and, and and access to accountancy, and I mean, it's 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 incredible. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't think that's worldwide, unfortunately. But I, I do. Libraries are very good at providing information, and you know, Google's pretty good at things like that as well, right? Um, you know, do do your research because um, it might it might be quite stressful, but it's very important that you know you you, you don't lose money, right? You know, you, um, there's so many brands who, um, you know, they, they, you know, amazing designers, you know, they graduate, you know, from wherever the, the college or university and um, to, to get everything in line, right, where, you know, you know, you might be needing production and you, you, know, you need a business plan and all those factors that it's, it's, it's very difficult to, to, you know, balance all those plates in the end. Um, but you, the, there is, there's a lot available that might not be necessarily apparent, but, you know, by searching and, and, and going to libraries and finding out, you, you'll find there's a lot of information there that's not that costly. In fact, it's probably free, a lot of it. That's, re that's really cool, Alex. Um, in terms of, like, again, just thinking a little bit more about the business and running a business, when it comes to taking off holiday or um, putting your out of office on, do you do that? Have you learned how to do that and switch off a little bit? Or just thinking about people that are graduating and are still working lots of different projects and jobs and we're allowed to give ourselves a bit of a break. How, how do you cope with that or do you switch off? Uh, well, I, I would say that starting with the advice for the, for the students that are grad, just graduating, I would say if you're... Um, if your university has done a brochure or online... Um, portfolios or however you you've got online portfolios <clears throat> with your email address or your instagram make sure that you check if you do going on holiday make sure you check them because you know you could find that someone's sort of emailed you about a possible job offer and you know if you've taken sort of two weeks off and then you you know disappeared and you don't look at it for two weeks then That's you know you might point. have missed it I, because that happens a lot because we do um, a lot of um, work where we do a lot of editorial. So there's a lot of times where we're, in, we're get, trying to get hold of students to write about their stories. And, you know, I've had, I think the longest one was the other week, something like three months. I mean, that is really, really extreme. But you, sometimes you do like get two weeks and they'll say, oh, no, I'm really sorry. You know, I've been uh, backpacking in Thailand or something like that. So I think... You know, be aware that if you have put something out there that is there 
for for you getting some kind of offer, then then think about you know maybe you know maybe you just need to check in every sort of two or three days. I think that's a really good point because we I mean we've had this happen a lot actually where you know companies um, have been looking to um, hire a designer through our site and and then they contact us because they can't get a hold of them. And, and then we find out that, yeah, they've been trying to get a hold of them for weeks. And, and, you know, it's amazing that some companies would actually continue doing that, right? Because they, well, you know what, it's, you know, they've missed the gravy boat, right? It, it's not good. You know, if you've got a, a name that's quite memorable and a little bit different, you know, I mean, Amber Smith's probably quite easy, to, that, that you could probably get away with. But if you've got a name like my name, like Brownless, there's not that many. Um, think, well, that guy never came back to me two years ago. I mean, people move, you know, go around different companies and they, they won't forget. I mean, a lot of people, they've got like memories. And, and so it's very, 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 it's incredibly important that when you, when you graduate or that you always reply, right? You have to reply. You don't know where those people are going to end up. You know, they might, it might not be of interest, but it, it's called manners. And, and it's very, very important that you apply to people who contact you. Um, obviously, if it's a, a, cold, a total cold call or something that's completely irrelevant, no. But when people are approaching you, and it could be in the industry that you're interested in, it, it, it's very, very important you apply within 24 hours, I say, personally. I mean, because um, people have got good memories and, and they move. If you are going on holiday to Thailand, then you could put your out of the office on, definitely. I'm off but the just yeah, but just to say that um, what we often find is that uh, people will put either something like their Instagram feed as 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 the contact, and then you'll go to the Instagram feed and find out that actually it's just sort of people's like holiday photos and they don't reply to that either. So I think, you know, it's really important to have some kind of professional method by which people, you know, people in industry can contact you. In terms of like personal holidays, I think um, Alex and I tend to, we not overlap, but we will have um, holidays. But I think what we tend to do is, uh, we'll probably see us still checking every, what, Two or three days. Well, every day, probably, I would say. At some every point. Day. Yeah, every day. Um, I'm, you know, religiously, yeah. morning and evening. Yeah. yeah. I think what came from that, that discussion there, and um, people process and people skills are really vital. And the idea of professional practice and professional etiquette is really is really mindful like I think some of the people that we meet um we do tell them to have a sort of digital cleanup so if you do have a professional Instagram don't put food pictures and pictures of you on the beach in your bikini it's not it's not the space for that maybe so digital cleanup um a couple more questions just before we finish off um you obviously work with lots of different partners and different industries and different companies how do you pitch to them or do they come to you can you just tell us a little bit about how that happens so for ID for example I'll let you ask that, Alex. Yeah, um, well, you know, we, we, we've got, you know, good connections, but um, um, my friend Jens Laugerson, um, I, 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 was, I was doing a talk at, at one of the universities that Jens was at not that long ago before, before um, this, you know, COVID kicked in. And um, he said, look, you know, you know, really like what you're doing and um, maybe it might be a good idea to do something that is proactive for all the students graduating this year. And, and, and he said, look, do you want me to have a conversation with my, my friend who's the editor-in-chief of ID magazine in New York? And, and that, 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 but we, yeah, we, we, we get a lot of um, recommendations and, um, you know, friends in the industry who they might not have anything for us there and then, but then, you know what, um, there's such and such I can talk to. So, for example, you know, Eileen Shaw, who has become a very dear friend, who Katie and me, and, um, you know, she created Design Pavilion. She originally created ICFF, which is the biggest furniture fair on the planet um, back in the day in New York. And she created Design Pavilion in, in New York and in Times Square. And she believes in what we're doing, you know. Um, so there's been a lot of goodwill and a lot of recommendation because they know that they will, we will deliver. Um, you know, we've done a couple of hundred competitions and events now and, you um, we, you know, we've worked with, you know, we're working on American Eagle in India at the minute that's only Indian focused, um, you know, obviously the global thing. But these things have happened because 
you know, we, you obviously have to deliver, you know, I mean, that's the thing. People won't recommend you if you're not delivering. Um, and, and, but yeah, I mean, Katie's been in the industry and I've been in the industry a long time and, you know, oh, I headed up. Yeah. Sorry. I was just going to say one of the things that which is actually quite useful for, for students and people who are actually graduating is the importance of uh, cross promotion. So when we started this with ArtsRed, that was one of the things that we realised was a really um, important tool. So working with, so that could be, you know, if you're a graduating student, that could be like working with your colleagues. So for example, you could get together with like two of your colleagues, five of your colleagues. Maybe you might want to do your own Instagram feed between the five of you, five of you publicizing each other is much more impactful than just one of you. So again, this idea of cross promotion is just so important because it means that, you know, no money changes hands, but it amplifies your voice. And I think that is a really, really important um, factor for graduating students. Yeah, uh, that's a great call. I mean, the collaboration, uh, you, you, you work better as a team. You know, five brains are better than one, you know? you know, the, to, to work together and, and, and promote and cross fertilize in different, you know, it might be a fashion designer working with a textile designer working with a graphic designer. And then mm-hmm. and, and suddenly you're creating this, this super group, right? And that, that's, that's very powerful, you know, to, to spread the word because it, you know, it, it may be, you know, I'm, I'm involved in another business and my, my, my colleagues in Hong Kong and it works really well because when I go to bed, he starts, right? So, you know, it's, I mean, you know, if you, there is these factors that, you know, I mean, you know, obviously been on the planet a while, so I, you know, picked up on this, but, you know, you're better off working together than against each other, I think, personally. That's brilliant advice. Um, just before we round up, is, uh, how important is PR and press to new graduates? I guess that could be through social media or through relationships. Um, I would say that yes, um, PR and press is, is is very important to to, to students and, and, and graduates, and you know that's one of the reasons why we've got the how to write a press release, and how and what and what's really really important I would say are images. I cannot overemphasize the importance of images because when we've done loads and loads of shows like design shows and design weeks and exhibitions, when we talk to them about what are the issues when you do work with, with recent graduates, they say in every time images, your images are not good enough, they're too dark, they're too this, they're too that, they're not industry standard. So I think if I was gonna say one thing that is the really key thing to get right is to make sure that you have a superb set of images, whether that's your actual styled images, that it could be, um, you know, the actual kind of, um, just the very plain images that people can use if you're actually selling. So for me, that would be really key. And no spelling mistakes. <laughs> good spell. And no spelling mistakes. Very good, very good. Uh, that actually just was a nice um, end to the question. So the best piece of advice you were ever given, just a little short snap, if you have any key advice you were given as a young person when you were younger or when you were a kid or, and has it, have you carried that through? Uh, believe in yourself. I think that that's, I think, um, you, you know, you've got to believe. Um, you've also got to be your own worst critic as well. Um, I think that, that they are really important factors. I mean, there's some people that think they can sing and they clearly can't, right? So there's, there's well, I'm, I'm the same man. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to be true. You've got to be true to yourself, you know? Yeah, and I would say the thing is, I think for me, it would be like, well, you know, you're only here once, you've got to get on with it. Um, you know, life goes ahead really, really fast. And so, you know, if that's really what you want to do, you just got to go for it. Yeah, make it happen. Yeah, make it happen. And you can't rely on others to do it for you. You've got to do it yourself, right? self autonomy That's brilliant. Um, Alex and Kitty, that's us came to the end of our session. Thank you so much. That was a really great, engaging insight to Arts Thread, but also a bit about you guys and your kind of relationship of working together and just some really amazing things. I've taken lots of notes, so I will be, be coming back to those myself. <laughs> it was really good. Did you have a nice time? Thanks, Scott. Yeah, brilliant. Thank really you very really much. Good. Thanks, um, So just, just to remind the audience that we will be um, archiving this page and we'll have a few more tips from Alex and Katie. 
And we'll be back in early August with Arts Thread again. Um, so you might meet Katie and Alex and a few other people that we'll bring along to that event. And our next Upgrade Yourself is in two weeks' time with Eloise Hauser, and who will be looking at her art practice. So for now, we bid you farewell and we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.